Sweet promises given to all who believe. The Sabbath. The Sabbath rests. What do we do on the Sabbath? We rest. But what does Sabbath rest mean? The Sabbath rest is a work free or physical rest. You know, the Hebrew verb Shavad means to cease, to stop doing what you are doing. It means that we stop on the Sabbath the things that we're doing uh, on the other days. So it is a work free physical rest. The Sabbath rest is also an attitudinal or reflective rest. It is a day as we rest, we also reflect. We refrain from things that we would otherwise have done. You know, the Hebrew verb noach actually is interesting. You know, when someone is put in custody or behind a bar, sometimes this verb noach is used. Of course, when someone is, is actually put behind a bar or in custody, the person will reflect, I mean, how did I end up in this place? So it is an attitudinal or reflective rest also. Then the Sabbath rest is a restorative rest. You know, the, in, in, in the, the Hebrew verb nafash means to breathe, you know, take, take a breath. So God rested, God breathed on, on, on the Sabbath and he, humans should also breathe on that Sabbath. That is to, to restore the, the, the energy you lost during the, during the week, I mean, as far as humans are concerned. So it is a restorative rest. Then it is a celebrative rest. The verb asa means to do or to make. So we do the Sabbath. Doing the Sabbath means celebrating the Sabbath. The same verb is used for the festivals. We celebrate the festivals. And in Isaiah 58, we, we see that the Sabbath is a delight. Oneg means, actually, we can say it's an exquisite delight. A day to celebrate and to delight in God. And then it is a grace-filled rest. God has finished the work. And we must enjoy the rest of God's grace. When we rest on the Sabbath, we also enjoy the grace of the Lord. Then the Sabbath rest is a blessed rest, as you saw already. You know, the Sabbath day was blessed and sanctified. So we enjoy blessings as we rest on the Sabbath. Of course, the verb barach means to, to bless. Then it is a holy rest. We enjoy God's presence which sanctifies. Kadash means to sanctify or make holy. So the Sabbath rest affects every aspect of a human being, the physical, mental, social, and spiritual aspects of a person. And as you saw already, Sabbath keeping epitomizes covenantal faithfulness. So one's faithfulness to the covenant of God actually is determined by their faithfulness in keeping the Sabbath and thus recognizing God as a creator and a redeemer. So the Sabbath is not a boundary that we should not cross. The Pharisees came up with so many rules to hedge the, the Sabbath and it became a burden. But far from that kind of attitude, the Sabbath is a gift that we should enjoy and appreciate. So you imagine having a special appointment with Jesus Christ on every Sabbath. Will you see that as a burden? Not at all. Isaiah 58 is all people also ask question. What does Isaiah 58 13 to 14 mean? If you will withdraw, and this is, a, this, this is my translation, if you will withdraw your food from the Sabbath, which means cessation from routine schedules and undertakings or routine pursuits. How do you withdraw your food from the Sabbath? By not doing your pleasure. Hefet means business somewhere in Isaiah 83, Proverbs 31, or Martha, Ecclesiastes, the business are there. By not doing your pleasure or pursuing your, your, your business on my holiday, but call the Sabbath a delight. 
the holy of the, the holy here represents the holy day the holy day of the lord on it and you honor it by not doing your ways what are your ways by not finding your pleasure again the, the word okay see efforts no business and by not speaking a word so must we keep mute on the sabbath no word does not just mean word always word here means routine undertakings negotiations of business plans in fact in isaiah 8 10 word is a plan i mean negotiation then in esther i'm actually way i mean word actually means your way so someone's way then in exodus interestingly word means task so the work that Israelite slaves in Egypt were doing was actually their, their word, that is their task. Then you will delight, that is, if you do all this, you will delight in the Lord your God. The purpose of the Sabbath is to delight in the Lord. And I will make you ride on the heights of the earth, and I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. The reference to the heights of the earth and the heritage of Jacob actually summarize the blessings of the covenant. So Isaiah 58, 13, 14 states that if God's people truly wish to delight in the Lord, they must call the Sabbath a delight and honor it as such, which then would mean not engaging in secular business or negotiating proposals and plans thereof both of which are their own ways for these are incompatible with the lord's ways which they pretend to seek even fasting while seeking their own pleasure and oppressing others during their fasts while the terms pleasure and delight can cover the same area and same fields of meaning in Isaiah 58, the word translated delight is more positive than the word translated pleasure as far as sabbath keeping is concerned the people turned to their own pleasure because they did not perceive sabbath keeping a delight in the context of Isaiah 58 delight includes proper attitude of rest and worship on the sabbath day one abandons oneself for the lord and this is proper sabbath keeping now we come to Sabbath and worship. What is the relationship between Sabbath and worship? We first begin by trying to define worship. What is worship? Worship is recognizing God's creatorship and sovereignty, acknowledging our sins, and appreciating His redemptive acts, uniting with fellow believers in prayer, praise, and hearing the word, and support living lives worthy of our calling as disciples of Jesus with the mandate to call others to accept and commit themselves to the true God and in the end joining the host of heaven in praise of our maker and our redeemer biblically speaking therefore between creation and the end or the end of the world the question is whether humans will worship God or Satan lifestyle time talents resources obedience all must flow from worship the act of worship is solemn and includes prayer which can take the forms of prostration kneeling standing or sitting singing proclamation and giving these are all elements of worship worship and sabbath the sabbath day cannot be reduced to church time it is a whole day celebration. It is more than just a day of rest. It is sanctified and blessed. It is a holy day. Therefore, the Sabbath is also connected to the worship of the God who set it apart and blessed it. The notion of worship has resided in, Sabbath, in the Sabbath since it was instituted at creation. God's time is holy time. 
and challenges us to look to the only one who is able to make us holy. In the ritual system of the tabernacle, the Sabbath day was a day of holy convocation, which appears to have been a gathering of people around the sanctuary for corporate worship. On the Sabbath day also, some ritual services changed, marking the distinctiveness of the seventh day for the Hebrew cultures. The temple was a house of prayer, and prayers in the form of burnt offerings were doubled that day. So in fact, you know, on, on the normal days, on the other days, the priests will have to offer two burnt offerings, one animal in the morning and one animal in the evening. But on the Sabbath, the priests had to offer two animals in the morning and two animals in the evening. So this, this, this indicated that uh, on the Sabbath, they, they actually did more ritual services in worship. And also the, the bread of the presence, the table of bread of the presence. You know, the, the bread was changed on Sabbath. So more or less, God was served his food on the Sabbath. This is quite interesting. Psalm 92 was devoted to, to the Sabbath and offers an explicit connection between the seventh day and the cultic service. And there was special temple music on the Sabbath also. Mention is made of a Sabbath pavilion in the temple, as well as an entryway that was to be opened on the Sabbath day for the king to enter and worship. One significant aspect of God's end time work of salvation involves the Sabbath, and we read this in Isaiah 50, 50, 56, 58, 66, and Ezekiel 46. Proper worship will be restored, and all nations will flow to Jerusalem to worship the Lord from Sabbath to Sabbath. At the time of Jesus, in the first century, of course, the Sabbath, I mean, worship took place on the Sabbath at the synagogues. So, you know, Jesus and disciples actually participated in this worship in the synagogues. And the church, after Christ's uh, resurrection ascension, the church often worshipped on the Sabbath. I mean, they worshipped uh, often in people's homes. Sometimes they joined the, the other Jews at the synagogues. So the Sabbath has been a day of worship ever since creation. When Jesus said, for example, in Matthew 24, verse 20, that, they, that people should pray that their, their flight doesn't have to take place on the Sabbath, he understood that his followers would, would keep the Sabbath even into the deep future. Thank you for listening. Sweet promises given to all who believe. Behold, I come quickly, mine own to receive. Hold fast till I come, the danger is great.